Hi there, you are in for a real treat today. We're going to be talking about file transfer and we're going to be using uh, FileZilla to do some FTP and we're also going to bring up a little terminal uh, so that we can do SCP. So let's uh, get started. So FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. It's a way to transfer files over a network. And the more secure version of that is called SFTP. And SFTP is done over SSH. So there's a nice little program that you can get. It's free, kind of simplifies um, it a little bit, gives you a nice GUI instead of having to remember all of the commands for FTP. And it's called FileZilla. Um, it's cross-platform, and you should get it. So over here on this left pane, you can see it says local site. That's your computer. Over here, it's kind of grayed out because we're not connected to anything. That's the remote site. That's the server or other computer you're going to connect to. And then you can fill out the information for the computer or host that you're going to connect to. But I prefer to open the site manager. And the reason being, usually I upload to the same places multiple times. So let's make a new one real quick. And I'm going to give it a name. And I'm going to call it um, student SSH server. And if you're a student at UWF, you have an account on the SSH server that you can use. So I guess we've covered what these are quickly and now the next thing we're going to do we're going to fill out the host information so the UWF SSH server um, this is the address right here ssh.cs.uwf.edu I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste that over here and we're not going to use FTP we're going to use SFTP so that our information is encrypted now the logon you're going to want to use is normal and you're going to provide your Argonet credentials so I'm going to go ahead and put in mine here and we're going to see if we can connect to that so let's do that up here it shows you the status so it's trying to connect it's connected and then it's uh, getting a look at the file structure so here we are now, you'll notice that I've got all of these hidden directories. They're the ones that start with a period, and they're kind of annoying. So I'm just going to head up to View up here and hit File Name Filters. And I'm going to Edit Filter Rules. And I'm going to make a new rule, and I'm going to call it Dot Filter. And Oops, that's, I don't want there. Okay. I want to filter out um, file names that begin with a period. I don't want to see them. So let's hit OK. And we want to enable it on both our local machine and on the remote machine, or at least I do. And I'm going to hit Apply. And all of those hidden files are now actually hidden. So that's good. And usually hidden files are not a good thing to mess with. So I've covered that there quickly. Okay, so here I am. There, here's my Argonet account. And FileZilla is nice. You can just click around and do what it is that you want to do. And I want to transfer a file, so let's do that. Let's say I um, want to... I'm going to head in here into my Dropbox, and I've got this test directory I made, and I've got a file in it. Let's see if I can transfer a file. I'm just going to try drag and drop, and um, it looks like we are having some connection issues. I'm having a storm out here, so that might be why. see here let's disconnect and see if we can reconnect to this server
Okay, and we're back. So let's head over. I don't want to go to doc. I want to go to documents, not downloads. Let's see if we can transfer this resume over. Okay, there it is. Easy as that. And also easy. I can just delete things. I just hit delete. Um, that actually moves me up a level. You have to right click and then delete. And I do want to delete it from the server. Now let's say I wanted to transfer a directory, which is what you're more likely to do, or maybe it's a zip file, but let's try a directory. So here's that test directory that contained the resume. I'm just going to drag and drop. No problem, takes care of it. And you can see that it's there. And we could, it's always a good idea to double check that it doesn't get corrupted. So I can just download quickly. And, um, I don't see it as downloaded. Let's see here. Here we go. And, oh, okay. Let's cancel that. And let's, um, yeah, see what's happening is it's trying to replace the one I have. And I don't really want to do that, but I could if I wanted to. Um, but what we could do is we could rename the new one. And um, we'll just say that this is the server copy that I'm downloading. And here it is. So there it is on my machine. And uh, we'll just make sure that it's, it's OK. And uh, so we'll hit Open. word to fire up. Okay, well, it looks like it did just fine, so that's great. So we've handled that. Now, one thing that's interesting, it's not essential for you to know this, this is actually an alias for a cluster of servers. Uh, there's five of them. I happen to know that number one is not working, and you can refer to individual ones um, like this, cs -des dash ssh1 is how they have it set up. So let's connect to that instead. And um, you can see that the connection was refused. So I guess they don't want that one to be connected to. So maybe I should try number two. And um, number two is good. And it's all the same it's all my same files, even though they're on different machines, they all connect to the same place. Um, and to me as the user, it, it's identical. And that's why we don't bother um, specifying this. Let, let the uh, servers working together figure out which actual machine um, we should connect to. So there you go. Now, one thing that I also want to pay, uh, draw your attention to is I didn't specify a port number. And I could have, but I didn't on purpose because I wanted to show you. You can see here, um, at the end here, it's using port 22. And that gives us an opportunity to talk for a minute about ports. Ports are a concept that the operating system uses when it makes connections. and a port number is 16 bits, so as a review of your binary arithmetic, 2 raised to the 16th is 65,536. And so that's why over here there's ports 0 to 65,535. And the first 1,023 are well known. Um, after that it's this registered bunch and then dynamic. And for your applications that you program, it's always a good idea to try to stay up in this range, maybe in here, but definitely stay out of these. You don't want to be fighting with the operating system. Um, as a side note, FTP uses ports 20 and 21, and SFTP uses 22. And these are just um, conventions. They could use something else, but that's, that's what ends up being used most of the time. And it's at the transport layer of the 
TCP IP protocol suite, and you'll learn more about that later. So we connected to the SSH server, that's great. And the SSH server, we call it that because um, you can also connect to it over SSH. So you would probably upload your code using FileZilla, SSH in, in a terminal or in PuTTY if you're on Windows, and then you can test and run your code. Um, however, to give us a little more control, Professor Reikertzer has set up a testing server. You can upload code to the server, but you may not run code on it. Now the environments are identical. It still uses CentOS for the operating system. It's, it's a Linux distribution, but um, you can't run it there. So don't be confused. Don't try to do that. And let's see if we can connect to that. So I'm going to make a new site here. Let's call it uh, Rykertzer Testing Server or something. And we need a host name. And here it is. It's cs-testing.cs.uwf.edu. Let's paste that in there. This also uses SSH and security first, right? And this does not use your Argonet credentials. These are ones that will be sent to you. And um, so I'm just going to put in my information here. And let's try connecting. And we're there. And so um, here's my little directory. Um, you're going to upload to your own directory once it goes live. OK, this is a little bit of a bonus on file transfer. Um, we're going to be looking at secure copy. And while we're at it, we're just going to take a quick look at compression. Um, so I'm going to open up uh, a window in my file explorer here. And um, I'm actually looking at um, this directory here. So I'm just going to open that up. OK. And I've got this directory in here called dummy. And it's got a little program and a make file and the compiled program. Of course, you don't want to upload um, compiled stuff because it needs to get compiled anyway. Uh, so it's just kind of a waste of space to do so. OK, so this is what I want to upload. Um, I could compress it here. and that would take care of that. Now, one thing that you should know about compression um, is that you can rename um, the zip file, but when you uncompress it, it keeps its original name. And the system was smart enough to know to rename it with a two there, but inside it would have been called dummy. So if you need to upload something called, um, you know, browberry proj1, um, then, and the zip file needs to be named that, then that's what it has to be named um, for that. Okay. So anyway, um, an alternative way to do zip, um, we can say zip dash r because we want to do it recursively and this gets rid of um, maybe you've seen it sometimes windows will make a thumbs dot db um, on the macintosh there's this uh, underscore mac os 10 little database entry thing you don't want that you just want the raw files so that's what this is about so do a directory leave spare us the other junk and then you put what you want the thing to be named and, um, whoopsies, we wanted our finder window. Um, we want the thing to be named browberry project1.zip, and the thing that we're zipping is browberry proj1. And so you can see that um, that did get zipped. So now for SCP, let's clear the screen quickly. Um, I want to send this up to the server, so I'm going to do scp, and the thing I'm sending up is the zip file, 
and I want to send it to my account at ssh.cs.uwf.edu. And relative to my home directory, that's what the squiggle's for, I want to send it to documents. So it's going to ask for my password to be able to do that. So I'm going to put that in. And it has transferred. And we can verify that. I've got another terminal window up here. And it just so happens that it is in home argonet, my user documents. Take a look. Oh, and there it is. And I can unzip that. And um, we are looking good. And so I could get into my code here and I could make it if I wanted to and run the program. And so that is how you do some compression and also secure copy.